Mother, to you, God, thank you for this day and for the blessing for what you've done already, God. Thank you for each one that comes this way and pray you'll bless this yeah. family. And pray you'll bless Brother Terry as he stands this morning and every man of God. God, give them that we need to hear. Help us open our hearts to receive it, God. That we can go out closer than we came in. And maybe someone here lost. God, I pray that heart will be touched with conviction and they'll make that decision for Jesus before it's too late. Pray you'll bless the offering. God, help build thy kingdom. Bless those that are on the prayer list every need. God, I pray you'll just supply for you. And Father, we give you glory for everything. In Jesus' name we pray.
say good morning, everybody, again. So, uh, I'm surprised to see people come in. We know it was Sunday school, you missed some. I'm glad to say, well, thank a whole lot of time. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. <laughs> I feel like I, I say what in my heart, what God told me to say, that's between you and Him. Uh, on, on a bulletin this morning, Calendar of events is uh, this morning special shopping for building fund. Uh, Wednesday night will be Frank Johnson to preach. Next Sunday will be Daniel Jones to preach both services. Also, Daniel Jones will announce his business meeting. Uh, and also, this special shopping for youth group. July the 13th will be thir for the Bible camp. July the 15th will be Bible camp. July the 16th, no night service. July 23rd, Van Jacinto to preach morning service. July 30th, the youth Sunday with Luke Ponder to preach. And also, July 30th, the uh, special offer for building fund. On a prayer request this morning, we have De Ralph Mink, Diane Eisenhower, Delos Anderson, Brooke Hutchinson, Clifton and Adam, Eddie Bentley, Louis Markham, James Steele, Kevin Bernard, Vision Family, Jim Perry, Rosie Osmond, David Wilson, Doug Taylor, Helen Duggar, Cindy Ashley and Riley, Kelly Odom, June Campbell, Daniel Furches, Danny McAlay, Timmy Taylor, Blake Atwood, John Pope, Randy Jennings, Larry Hoffman, Will Gray Adams, Aaron Shirley Grace, Judy Dunn, Angie Daugherty, Gary, Callum, Joe McCress, Stacey Dow, Mindy Fleming, Carl Wiggins, Andy Lowe, Judy and Sister, Ryan, Mike Reynolds, Harley McFadden, Eddie's family, Emily and Christian Home, Tommy, Tony Jennings, Tamil Forby, Sue Hensley, Dorothy Keller, Diane McCannon, Brenda McLeod, uh, Lucas Perdue, Pug Tester, Wims Wims, Harley Rankin, Ben Byers, King Jane Head, Ed Ham, Greg Prophet, Larry Miller, Emily Church, Simpson and Jan Hump Humphrey, Sue Williams, Frank and Joy of Maine, Brenda Lunsford, Andy Osborne, Cliff Tressler, Diane Harmon, Mrs. Work, Mrs. Work, Kendra Franklin, Jeanette, Michelle Worley, David Ward, Terry Melissa, Krista Owens, Bronson Alexander, Ross Dow, Wallace Lewis, Patty Osborne, Lane Kirby, Aaron Steele, Randy Lewis, Diane Wagner, Dylan Campbell, Buckley Connett, Delmer, Wendell Carraway, Marie Jennings, Dustin Rankin, Dustin Rankin, June Brady, Mike Lifford, Richard Steedham, Jackie Fry, Margaret Eisenhower, Bob Miller and wife, Nancy Button, John Yates, Joseph Schroep, Bob Heck, Clara Hurd, Nathaniel Rice, Brandon Poor, Jerry Harry, Lester Dunn, Eddie Cross, and I wrote that nurse at home this morning. Is there anybody else? Anybody got nurse? Uh, how many birthdays come up this week? Got a birthday come up this week? Yeah. Got another here too. You got Bob's birthday too? Happy birthday, these two.
I said it's good to be in the Lord's house this morning. I say we appreciate each and every one that's come out to be with us today. We just ask that you uh, remember all those that's not with us. Just the Lord just be praying about that. And uh, God uh, just get them back, keep them safe wherever they are right now, and that God will get them back at the next appointed time. Do be much in prayer for those that's on our prayer list. We have much to be in prayer about. Also ask you to pray for uh, Bible camp coming up. It's just a few weeks away. And uh, we hope that you're making plans to join us and help us as we get ready to probably host them. I don't know how many kids we'll have, but we've been pushing around the hundred the last couple of years. So all help that you can give is greatly appreciated, and we do appreciate you. But we always like to give everyone an opportunity to serve the Lord. So maybe somebody here this morning has a song on your heart, something you'd like to say or do for the Lord. Hearts and minds are clear this morning. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. Somebody else this morning. A lot of places we could be. A lot of places we may even wanted to be. But I'm glad we're here. Amen. I'm not only glad that we're here, but I'm glad that we have the help and strength to be able to get here. You pray for us as we always desire your prayers. Uh, just uh, we're going to have to go back to the doctor too. It looks like we're going to try to get some be much in prayer about that. If you've got your Bibles today, we're going to open our Bibles up over the book of St. Luke, chapter number 18. St. Luke, chapter number 18, when you find your place, you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. If you're not, we understand that as well. But you do pray this morning. We wasn't sure what God wanted us to say or do here. This is going to be some familiar scripture, I'm sure, to some of us. I hope it's familiar scripture to all of us. Poor Travis got there goes to doing waving hands and everything else. So, uh, first, or St. Luke chapter number 18. St. Luke chapter 18. And we're going to read down here in verse, and start in verse number 18. The Bible says this, And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, and today, Lord, to assemble ourselves before thee. Thanking you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to come out to your house, worship in your presence and in your honor. Lord, I pray today, dear God, that everything that's said and done will bring glory and honor to your name and will just help somebody be a stepping stone for, uh, for somebody to lead to you. I pray to Heavenly Father for every name and every burden that's on that prayer list. Uh, you know what all is going on with them, Lord. You know what it's going to take to help them. You know what it's going to take to restore them. And I pray to Heavenly Father that you, if there's one on there that's lost and undone or here in this house today, God, you'll save that soul before it's everlasting too late. Help me only to say that which you can give us. And God, I just want to get out of the way. We give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus. Blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love the scripture right here. I don't know why the Lord just put it on our heart yesterday. And uh, we just thought about it. I thought about it off and on for the past few weeks. And uh, this portion of scripture about the rich young ruler. And, uh, you know, I know we've all heard the story. We always talk about how hard it is for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven and uh, and it's not because of the money the money's not the problem the bible tells us uh, uh, plainly that he tells us also that the love of money is the root of all evil didn't say the money itself but but he's talking there and he said the the, the, the young feller come the young ruler come to to christ to ask him what he could do to enter into heaven now and when he told him what he needed to do, he said, Yet lackest thou one thing. And it got me to thinking about this very thought. Uh, the thought was this, that there's something missing. Amen. Uh, th th there was something missing in this guy's life. Now, now we understand that uh, 
by reading the scripture right here is that we see that this man was a pretty good person. Now, I, I'll bet you if you met this guy on the street, uh, if you had dealings with him or knew about him and his family, you'd probably say, hey, they're a pretty good guy. They're pretty, he's a pretty good guy. He's pretty good people. Amen. Uh, Bible says, how, how would we know that? We know that because of what the Bible said. Jesus told him uh, about the commandments, and he began to give some commandments to him. Uh, and he said, those have I kept from my youth up. Uh, he told him there, some of the things that he told him were was not to commit adultery, uh, uh, not to kill, not to steal, don't bear false witness. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of times it's hard, uh, uh, especially you, you get around a lot of what so-called business people, uh, and you kind of began to expect them to lie to you, amen? Uh, you kind of expect them began to not exactly give you the whole truth. Uh, and, and he went on there, not only that, but he said, honor thy father and thy mother. Uh, and here's what got me about that portion of it as well. For this guy to, to have done those things, or at least in his own mind, I, I'm sure he failed, amen? Uh, because all of us fail in a lot of these areas. Uh, we all come up short, amen? Amen. Uh, in other words, we're all missing something, amen. Uh, we're missing the mark. Uh, uh, we're missing the target, amen. Uh, uh, we want to we be better, but, but for this guy to have said those things, he had to have lived somewhat of a pretty good life, amen. Uh, and I look around today, and as far as I know, most of us, most of you, you live a pretty good life. Uh, I don't know everything that happens and goes on in your life, but God does, and God knows uh, what might be missing. But here's what I really got to thinking about. And when he told him he had kept those things from his youth up, he, Jesus then went on to say this, but yet lackest thou one thing. Uh, Y'all, you, you're lacking something. Uh, sell all that you have, uh, amen. Uh, but, uh, and that guy was very sad at the thing. He was upset at the thing uh, because he was rich and he was going to have to get rid of a lot of things and do a lot of stuff and follow after him. Uh, now, one thing I want to get started to point out that I noticed this time around in this scripture as well before we get really into the message, uh, uh, he, he was, uh, what Jesus told him uh, to sell all that he has. Now, now it'd be, uh, uh, most of us, uh, most followers you see out there in the world trying to get a congregation, trying to get followers around, they want you to sell everything you got, but they want you to bring it in, right? That's not what Jesus asked him, amen? Uh, Jesus was not asking him about uh, uh, to bring his money to them. Uh, he said, all that you have, just give it to the poor, amen? Uh, uh, distribute that among those who could really use it and those who could really need, who really needs it. Uh, uh, and it got me to think in our lives a lot of times, now this fellow went away sorrowful. And if you'll read on or read over in Mark and, uh, and uh, Matthew, you'll find out that he departed very sorrowfully. Uh, he, he, he had bitter, he had hurt in his heart because he thought that he might have to give something up uh, to be able to follow Christ. Uh, but what's even, what we don't realize is this. Now, I know what, Paul, what Jesus said here. Uh, Jesus said, now, if you'll give that up and give it to the poor and follow me. Uh, see, the, the, there's something, that's not the question that the young man came to ask. He did not ask about following Christ. He didn't ask about being a part of that. But he asked what a man should do to enter into heaven. Amen. And here's what I want to tell you something. There was something that was very precious under this man. Now, there was something that mattered above all under this, man, this ruler. And it just so happened to be his money. Amen. I, and I got to thinking this way as the Lord was giving us this. Uh, I wonder in our lives, your life and my life, uh, what are we willing to give up to go to heaven? Amen. Uh, what are we willing to give up that we might follow Christ? Uh, you will say, well, why should I have to give something up? Uh, well, I'm going to tell you a lot of times you're going to have to give things up just for the same reason uh, that this man had to give up his money. Uh, because it is what was standing between him uh, and true salvation. Uh, it was what was standing between him uh, and a true relationship with God. Uh, I want you to know something before you ever, ever have to even think uh, about what you might have to give up. Uh, let's take a quick look at just what Christ gave up for us. Amen. Uh, Bible tells us that he had to flee when he was a very infant. Amen. Uh, 
we know what the Bible tells us. We know who Christ is. Uh, Christ is the Son of God. Uh, we know that because what the Bible tells us so. Uh, and you want to know what they also know? We also know that he had been in heaven. Uh, and we also know that was a place uh, that he had was willing to give up. Uh, now look, I like it. I like the easy button, don't you? Uh, I like when things go smoothly. I like when things go easily. Uh, listen, we went to, uh, I mean, I just, I like for things just to be easy. Amen. Uh, I was telling Melissa, we went to town yesterday, got some of the, a lot of the stuff for Bible camp. Uh, she said, you need anything else while we're down here? I, I said, yeah, I need a winning lotto ticket. I mean, why, do I, why would I even want a winning lotto ticket? Why? Because I want it easy. I don't want to do nothing else. Amen. I, here's what the world doesn't, you know, Christ could have stayed in heaven. I, he didn't have to do anything for you or I, I, but he was willing to sacrifice all that he had for you and I. Amen. I, he was willing to give that up uh, just for you and I. I. Not only was he willing to leave the splendor of heaven, that'd been enough. Amen. I, he, not only was he willing to leave there, uh, but he was willing to come down to this earth uh, and live a life uh, that probably would not be very pleasing unto most of us. Uh, it does not look enticing unto any of us. Uh, we wouldn't want to go live and walk and live the way that Christ did. Uh, we like things easy. Amen. Uh, and I was thinking there about Christ and the things that he done. And not only did he have to live a hard life, the Bible tells us that he didn't even have a pillow to lay on. Uh, he didn't have anything that was his own. Uh, and not only did he live that life, uh, hey, but he went on he had to suffer some things. He had to suffer ridicule. He had to suffer being called names that was not so. He had to be, he suffered things and live in situations and places that he probably did not want to go. But because of you and I, he was willing to give it all up. Amen. Amen. He was willing to give it up. But not only was he willing to give up material things, but he was willing to give up all, all kinds of spiritual things. Not only was he willing to, to go to the cross for us, uh, but the things that he endured here on this earth, uh, he was willing to give it all up. Uh, he's willing to give it all up for you and me. The uh, Bible said he told him that. He uh, said, I want you to go out. I want you to take what you got. I want you to sell it and give it away. Uh, and you know everywhere Jesus went, uh, Jesus wasn't about taking money. Amen. Uh, Jesus was willing to go no matter where it was uh, for whatever, no matter what the cost. Uh, he went and God provided. Amen. Uh, not only did he leave splendor of heaven for you and I, uh, not only has he been ridiculed for you and I, uh, but he is willing to give his very own life uh, for you and I. Amen. Uh, I'm not talking about a small sacrifice, uh, but I'm talking about the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, and here's what I want to say. There's some things missing in our life, amen. Uh, uh, and we need to look today and see what in the world, well, what we're willing to give up, amen. Uh, what we're willing to give up to follow him. Uh, Jesus was willing to give his life when he went to the cross of Calvary, died on the cross for you and I, uh, suffered the beating that took place before he got there. Uh, all of that was not of his own accord uh, or because of the sins that he had committed, uh, but those were because of things that we had done. Uh, God God loved us enough uh, that he was willing to give it all up to go to, go to that cross for you and I. I. I tell you, he suffered a lot. Uh, and one of these days, he's going to come back and get us. Uh, hey, that are ready. But I wonder how many of us uh, have actually uh, uh, gave up something just for him. You know, here's what amazes me. We have a hard time. Uh, Jesus told this young man to go out and sell all he had and distribute it to the poor. And you know a lot of times he, all he does is ask us to do something very small. Very small sometimes. You want to know why our, house, uh, our church houses are not full today? Because most people are not willing to give up on anything. Amen. Uh, most people's not willing. I appreciate you for being willing to give up some things to come to church today. Uh, listen, this is a place where we can grow. Uh, this is a place where we can get excited. Uh, this is a place where we can get strength and encouragement. Uh, hey, to fight the fight that's out there. Uh, I seen today, this week, there's a lot of people couldn't give up the lake. Amen. Uh, they had to be out there today. Uh, there's a lot of people today couldn't give up sports. Uh, they had to be out there today. Uh, there's a lot of people today, uh, hey, couldn't give up the couch or the bed. Uh, 
uh, they felt like they had to lay in it. It's the only time they got. Uh, hey, let me tell you something. Uh, there's coming a day uh, when this old life is going to end. Uh, I want to be saying, I want to leave out of here uh, knowing that I didn't let anything hinder me uh, from being where God wanted me to be, uh, doing what God wanted me to do, uh, and saying what God wants me to say. Uh, hey, that's how we are going. Uh, we ought to be willing to give up some things. Uh, we ought to be willing to give up some of our time. Uh, and then when we start, we began to become willing, uh, then we can find out uh, exactly what's missing. You ever felt that way? You ever felt like there's something in your life that's missing? Amen. Absolutely missing. I've told this story probably a few times before. But I remember a few years ago, probably three or four years, about three years ago now, I guess, we bought uh, Riley a little electric tractor. We went and we looked everywhere for this thing, man. I mean, right one he wanted, and, you know, we, we looked all over, and it was during Christmas time, and <clears throat> things were sold out. And we went to Rural King over in Bristol there, and they had the box of one, and on, the, on that box, it had a, uh, a, a piece of paper, and it said it was a, had a discounted price, and it said, parts missing. And I thought, man, I mean, you know, these things are pretty expensive. They hadn't marked it down much. So I talked to Melissa, and I found we got the, we got somebody, I don't remember, we got one of the store, the, the store workers, and she came over there, and I said, what part's missing? She said, I don't know. I said, well, if you don't know what's missing, I said, is that discount the best you'll do? Will you do more? She said, well, I don't know. She said, I don't know how to negotiate. I said, that's good. I do. <laughs> Amen. I mean, it worked out good for me. I said, go get your boss. Amen. I said, let's go get the main guy. And the main guy finally came back there. The manager came back there. And I asked him, I said, hey, I said, what part's missing? He said, I don't know. I said, you don't have any idea. You just know parts are missing. He said, yeah. I said, well, listen, you're going to have to do a whole lot better than that. Because I said, I'm not going to get home, and the one part that's missing is the part that holds everything else together. Amen. Amen. Look, I finally, we finally negotiated around, and I got what I thought could be a reasonable deal. And when I got home and we began to put the things together, you want to know what was missing? A pin that held the trailer tractor to the tr to the trailer to, to the trailer. A three dollar I'm probably less than that probably a two dollar pin, a two dollar pin, missing and they sold out. Hey Amen. Look, let me tell you what, there's a lot of things happen in people's lives, uh, a lot of things go wrong, uh, and you'll sell out and give up just because one little thing's missing, amen? Uh, you don't really know how much fun you can have uh, until you have that one piece uh, that makes it all whole, amen? Uh, listen, you can come to church, uh, you can sit in the pews, uh, and you can go out, you can pay your tithes, you can do all that stuff, uh, and go out and be miserable because you're not really hooked up, amen? And, uh, all you're doing is getting pushed around. Uh, all you're doing is getting to the wrong place, into a place, uh, but you can't experience uh, real happiness. Hey Amen. You have to understand. You have to have it all. You have to have the missing piece. You put that missing piece together. We got that little pen. I took that. I bought a pen, put it in the trailer pen, and there now it still works. They still ride it. Go all around, do all kinds of things with it, have all kinds of fun with it. You know, a lot of people don't have fun being a Christian. A lot of people don't have fun at church because they're just missing something. Amen. Uh, and I don't think it's here. I think it's missing in our own lives. Uh, a lot of times we go down to church and we're more satisfied when there's something stirs our flesh uh, instead of stirring our soul. Amen. Uh, I tell you, there ain't nothing. We don't want to be missing out on that. We live in a day and a time. Uh, hey, when churches have uh, coffee bars and uh, bagel uh, bagel shops and everything else out in their foyers, uh, hey, I'm here to tell you today. You want to know what church really is? Uh, quit worrying about what's going on outside. Uh, quit worrying about what you're going to have to face after a while. Uh, hey, get into church and start worshiping him hey and I promise you church won't be something where you're missing anything uh, hobbies and all those kinds of things may be important uh, uh, at home uh, and it may be important to take some spot in your life uh, but you better be willing to give it up uh, hey to get and do what God wants you to do amen I'm, self, I'm speaking to self as well amen look I'm speaking to self just as well he told him I said you lack something amen 
I tell you, there's a lot of things lacking in this world today. A lot of things lacking right here. A lot of things lacking around or in the pulpit and listen and, and the preachers today. I mean, listen, we're missing some of them old fashioned type preachers, ain't we? Amen. I, I tell you something else that's missing. I, in our congregation, uh, a lot of times we sit around and we don't. Well, we expect the, the pre- preacher to, to pump us up and give us everything that we need, and we expect him to be right on top of everything, and we expect that the church to be able to supply everything to us. Uh, hey, listen, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, 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 Melissa showed me something this week, a little thing that said this: uh, uh, your is your uh, expectation, your commitment as a Christian, as a as the congregation or to match your expectations of, of the preacher. Amen. Uh, listen, if you expect a lot out of us, you expect a lot out of the church, uh, you expect your expectations, you, you should be doing the same thing. Amen. Uh, you should be willing to put that into it. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, we need some help. Amen. Uh, we need help all the way around. The uh, Bible said there, he told that old boy, said, I want, he said, you go and sell all that you have. Uh, and he got mad, he got hurt in his heart, and he got angry, uh, and he left and he went out. Uh, hey, let me tell you something. Uh, I know there's people, uh, hey, that's got hurt. I know there's people that's got let, went out. Uh, but I'm going to tell you right now, if they're not willing to give up uh, on the things that they've got, uh, who are not willing to do what God wants them to do, uh, then you're never really going to be happy. Uh, hey, if God tells you to go to church, go to church. Uh, you know what? I don't think he tells nobody to lay at home and stay in the bed uh, because he built this place uh, for us to gather together. Uh, he built this place uh, for us to worship him. Uh, and I think it's time, uh, hey, that we started worshiping him. I know a lot of times in our life, I'll guarantee you that at some point in here, anybody's been a Christian very long and been in church very much, at some point in your life, at some point in your spiritual in a spiritual service, you felt like you should raise your hand or say amen. You wasn't even willing. I want you to get this. I want you to get this now. I'm not I'm not bashing you, I'm not I'm not being mean to you. But you wasn't even willing to give up what somebody else thought about you to serve God. If, if God tells me to do something and I don't do it because I'm afraid what somebody else will think or what somebody else will see or what somebody else will say, then you know what I did? I quenched the Spirit of God. I, I, I listened to them rather than listening to God. It's plain and simple. Amen? I do it too. We all do it. Uh, but I'll tell you what, we're living a day and a time when we, we won't understand how, why we're not happy, uh, why we have to go s- see such hard times in life. Uh, then I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to quit worrying what everybody else thinks uh, and just start going with God. Uh, just start listening to what He has to say. Uh, hey, you want to know why our schools and our children uh, are the way they are today? Uh, it's because we, quit, we, uh, we were not willing uh, to put our faith forward in the school system. Uh, we're willing to step back and let them take over and raise our children there. Hey, I'm telling you, it's time that we stood up. It's time we figured out what's missing. Hey, and we get that piece back together, get the tractor and the wagon hooked together and start living for God the way he wants us to. The way he wants us to. Not half-hearted. Not half-heartedness. Amen. But I'm talking full-heartedness. With everything that's in us, our school systems, our government. I mean, we look around and we see what a mess they're in and what they're missing. Yet we're not willing to give up, to stand up for what's right. Not willing to go the extra mile. I'm going to say this and I'm going to close. He told the, he told the man, the, the, the ruler at the well, go sell, come follow. Do you know that's all he wants of us today? All he wants us to do is to follow. Then do you think that Christ expected him to go home and sell everything that he had, not, not a dime, and just come follow him? I think he did, but I don't think that's the message out of this. I think the message is this. Just like Jesus knew what was holding the rich ruler back, what was keeping him from really serving and following, What was really keeping him from putting God first, he knew exactly what that was. I want you to know today that he knows exactly what's keeping you from serving him. He knows what it's going to take. All you have to do is be willing to lay it down and give it to him. 
All you have to do is be willing to give up whatever it is. Uh, hey, I, I'm not telling you to go out and sell everything and give everything away. Uh, what I'm telling you is this. Uh, get our priorities right uh, and we can experience a love and a relationship in Christ uh, like we've never experienced before. Never head bowed, never eye closed, never Christian praying, never heart searching. I ask you, how is it with you? How is it? Do you know that you know? Are you where God wants you to be? Are you, are, are you happy in your Christian walk? Are you happy in your, the, the, your serving of the, of the Savior? Let me ask you this. Is God, is Jesus happy with your serving? If not, hey, you have an opportunity today to get on this altar and get that cleared up. Hey, maybe you're here today, maybe you need some strength, maybe you need some help. I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody here today. And I'm praying for you. I know it's a hard battle. People don't make it easy. People do not make it easy to serve God out there in this world. But we serve a big God. Hey, let him get, let him in. I'm not going to ask you a lot of questions this morning. I, if you're here today and you've got a burden on your heart, they see you on this altar already. It's open for anyone for any reason. You are more than welcome to get on this altar and lay your burdens down. You're more than welcome to get up here and find the help that you need. <clears throat> She's going to finish up playing with this verse and we're going to the Lord in prayer. Anybody else want to come? Before we pray. What a Savior we serve. Jason, you play for us. wasn't about the money. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else today? You got something on your heart? Hearts and minds clear. I'll ask a couple ushers if they would to come up. We'll take up this offering for the building fund. I'll ask Jason or uh, I ask uh, Buck if he would ask a blessing on this offering. Everything you give to this offering goes to help our building fund. Goes to help our building fund. This time I'm going to ask that everyone would, will please stand to our feet. I'm going to ask Brother Robert Gwynn if you would come on up here. We received his letter and we're going to give him a right hand of fellowship. We'll dismiss by everybody that can. <coughs> we'll dismiss by coming around and shaking this brother's hand.